Bill and I have just finished celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary, so we go back a ways. We didn't really anticipate something like this happening in our lives, because when I first met Bill, I think one of our first dates was that we, he tried to teach me how to curl. He's always been really active. When he went to uh, university in, in Ontario, he was at Royal Military College, and they're very, very physically oriented. They have morning runs. I think they had to run a couple of miles every morning. And he was on their football team. Their, he played rugby. He played soccer. Anyhow, when I met him, we continued on that way. We found we had a lot of interests. We liked skiing, um, bicycling, hiking. And so once we settled in Edmonton, um, we continued that on. But we did start our family. We've had four children. And we've basically been a pretty active family because we wanted our kids to enjoy the things that we did. So we've been really heavily into soccer. All the kids have done so and one of my sons is actually at a fairly high level um, soccer um, has been in Edmonton here. Um, we've also been really sort of hiking enthusiasts. We like travel. Bill and I also like the arts. We go to Citadel, we go to the symphony, we go to the opera, and we enjoy them all. Last year, this sort of all came to a halt um, suddenly when the diagnosis sort of started to come through. We had been sort of enjoying our, our spring, but Bill had decided for some reason that he would sort of drop out of his soccer team because he didn't seem to have the same kick that he used to have. And so he still thought he was able to sort of do sports at, for a man his age. I have been uh, lucky and honored to work with uh, Bill for almost uh, uh, 11 years. And during this time, I have been always honored, you know, inspired by his uh, leadership and, you know, the great job that he has done for everybody. And I was always impressed by uh, the level of the, you know, his profession, uh, professionalism work and also uh, uh, hard work and uh, I have never had any problem during these 10 years and always uh, he has been helpful and you know a big uh, leader for me so uh, I hope that you know uh, he has stayed with us for longest time as possible and we enjoy his leadership more. amazed with the dedication and the generosity of people that are connected with the society and with these fundraising events. We couldn't ask for a more supportive, more enthusiastic, more dedicated group of, of volunteers and supporters. Help with programs and services right here in Alberta. We're serving the best part of about 200 people with ALS, living with ALS in Alberta and that of course um, becomes larger because we work also with the families, uh, the children and uh, people who support those individuals. From the ALS Society office we provide support and information. We offer people with a diagnosis a manual, uh, very well written, that covers all the aspects of ALS. We offer help with equipment that is not available through other resources. We work with uh, home visits, seeing people at home in their environment, uh, at hospital visits or at clinic visits. And we have programs available for youngsters as well. Well, I, was, I played soccer all of my life. But I also was active in a lot of other sports like uh, football and rugby and, and uh, softball. And I was a skier and I liked hiking in the mountains. And uh, I've kept a lot of those up most of my life. And so it's a, a change in lifestyle now to have to adapt to watching them on TV. But uh, there's, they're still a big part of my life. I am proud of them. I, I just... He's an amazing person. He he still works really hard and he solves problems really well. And uh, he's he's an amazing man. I, I wish that they would find a cure or something that would would slow it slow it down. And I, people that have this is uh, have to be so brave and so. Uh, 
courageous to to live through and and, and be as uh, as strong, be very strong person to be able to to live with this sort of thing. So, and and I wish the. Uh, I have all the admiration in the world for people who 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 have it, and I wish I could. I wish actually I could take some of that pain away from some of these people, but it's and you can't. You just help. And you hope that they're happy, and and they. Uh, I hope that they find a cure. I mean, that's the one thing. If they can work on somewhere, and it may not happen in time for a lot of these people, but eventually they got to find a cure for this. He has been a prime example of how to live life to its fullest, and I really wish him all the best. Um, I know that sometimes this can be this ca this disease can go into remission or it can be reversed. I wish that one day uh, somebody will find a solution and this disease will be reversed, and uh, that's why we are here to. Uh, support him emotionally, support him fully, um, whichever way we can help so that ALS Society can contribute to the cause and find a cure for this disease so that nobody else in the world has to suffer these deadly things. He was still thinking that there wasn't too much wrong. In June of last year, he actually ran around the seawall in Vancouver in Stanley Park. He found it a little tiring, but I'm sort of thinking that I would have too by that time. On the la long weekend last July, we went hiking in the mountains by Banff. We went on 14-kilometer hikes, and they were pretty arduous for me. Didn't seem to see, feel anything really that out of the ordinary. But two weeks later, we were trying to prime ourselves for our regular um, summer holiday in Naramata, where we go for um, five-kilometer runs in the morning, and that's up and down the mountains. And... We started down our front block to get in shape, and he couldn't run two blocks, and we just didn't know what was going on. So we finished a run as a walk, and we thought, well, okay, it's just we're a little bit out of shape. He wasn't in soccer. So when we went to Naramata, when we tried to start our running, he couldn't run down the lane, and he sort of tried pushing himself, and he wiped out. And at that point in time, we knew there was a really different aspect going on and it was very frightening for us. We sought medical attention as soon as we got back to Edmonton and things have sort of evolved since then. It came very suddenly for us um, and so it's really been affecting our lives now. We've tried to continue to do some traveling. We went to Chile and Argentina in February. We went to well, last summer we went to Scotland after the diagnosis and um, we've just come back from Germany, Rhodes, Greece, and uh, France for a two-week trip there. But as you can see, we're not able to take our holidays the same as we were before. We're still trying to live every day, you know, to its fullest. But it really, really is a different sort of life for us now. And we're still trying to grapple with that. I think I think it's still, you know, sort of hard to get used to, but we're trying to approach it with our most positive attitude. And um, you know, I think it's there's something to be said for knowing that you have to live every moment for what it is. And um, yeah, we're we're gonna try and hang in there as much as we can it's like it's not the end of the world and it, we do have time to still let each other know that we love each other and so I'm glad I got to come home I was away for school and so I, I got to come home this summer and I've been taking him to work and looking after him a little bit more so I'm really happy that I could do this for him well yes yeah, I am a pediatrician and and I feel that I should know more about the disease. I feel that I should come up with some <laughs> solutions, if there are any, that I should be Googling more on the Internet to see if there's anything coming through. Um, it's fairly frustrating because, you know, just taking on all the parts of our lives that, you know, sort of Bill did, because he looked after me more than I looked after him till this year. <laughs> Medically, it is frustrating. But, you know, we have lots of diseases that we don't have cures to. And, and I just, sort of in that terrible lottery of life sometimes, you get the bad 
you know, choices. And, and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's frustrating, but, you know, I have to be realistic. There are lots of other people in situations that, you know, are hopeless like this, too. And, you know, we have to make the best of it.